Good afternoon. Welcome to Granny Moreno's Homestead. Guess what? <laughs> it's bean picking time. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to can some beans. Process some beans. And these are string beans. What's going to be in this pan will be for me. What's in this bucket? That's for the chickens. Grow a little bit for me. Grow a little bit for the chickens. <laughs> you know, we need more grannies out on the porch with grandkids. <laughs> grandkids uh, snapping beans, shelling peas. Yeah. But instead, where are those grandkids? <laughs> They're in the house <laughs> on their computers and their cell phones. Yeah. Watching trash TV. <laughs> oh dear. A long time ago when I was growing up, we enjoyed going to Granny's house, sitting underneath the shade tree out in her yard, and helping her shell peas, snap beans. Oh, it was fun. Granny made it fun, yeah. She told us good stories. And she taught us our ABCs, taught us to count. We learned the ABC song with Granny singing it to us. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And whistle while you work. She'd say, ah, come on, sit down here. A little bit of work never hurt anybody. Where are those grandkids now? <laughs> That'd be the enjoyment of my life <laughs> the highlight of my day would be to sit down surrounded by grandkids helping me snap these beans <laughs> well <clears throat> i want to tell you what my grandpa told me about spanish flu i got to thinking about it we got a serious situation here you know that uh virus. Some call it Charlie Vickers. Some call it something else. But we have a serious pandemic going on in our country. Don't you think it's not? Because it is. So, straighten up there. Snap your beans. And listen to what my Papa Gomez told me when I was a kid. He said, out in the country, he said we weren't too bothered with it. But up there in Jacksonville, Florida, Orlando, in the big cities, down in Miami, he said a lot of people caught that Spanish flu and died. Papa said some of them died within 24 hours after getting, to, getting down with that stuff. You see, back in 1918, they didn't have the drugs and the knowledge that we have today. They had to rely on what they knew. They relied upon, a lot of them, relied upon their knowledge of herbs. And a lot, even a lot, a lot more, <laughs> they relied upon the healing power of God. Ah, if you don't want to hear it, don't hear it. <clears throat> but I'm gonna tell you what my papa said. If it wasn't for God healing a lot of those people, there would have been a lot more deaths than what there were now. So, you see, back in 1918, back in the day, they had their pandemic. A lot of people lost their lives. But now, in the year 2020, we've got a lot more knowledge. And people, <laughs> wash your hands, wear your mask, put on your goggles, buy a face shield. We got a second wave coming. <clears throat> I got a second wave coming of green beans that I'm gonna be snapping. 
<laughs> Just planted them the other day. Second, second uh, planting of them. I like to keep it small. That way I don't have too many to do at one time because it's pretty tiresome doing this. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> sitting on the porch and under the trees with my grandparents, sitting on the shade in the South Florida sun, trying to help stay cool in South Florida. That was a real trick back in those days. But under the big oak trees, I'd sit and listen to my grandparents talking about the depression. Most of them didn't know about it. Didn't bother them. Because, you know why? Because they lived in the country. You know, they had already come out from among those people that were in the cities. They were already living plain, clean, simple life. They wasn't running to the honky-tonks, Papa said. <laughs> Women went out on the street corners, he said. They were in their homes taking care of their husbands and their children. Husbands were at home with their wives in the night. He said, because that's what decent men did. Well, we might need to return to that simple life that my grandparents spoke about. Get your garden going. Make your own entertainment at home. Stay out of those honky-tonks, as my grandparents and my dad called them. See, those honky-tonks are helping spread the pandemic. Yes, you can disagree with me. I don't care. But what's true is true. The most true thing of all is that you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared spiritually because just being, having food in your house isn't going to work. You need to be prepared spiritually. You need to be prepared to hear God's voice. And when God says, time to pick up and move to a safe spot, then pick up and move to that safe spot. Because what is all the food in the world going to do you if you lose your life by some marauding band? Think about it. Get out of the city. Get yourself in the country. I don't care what family heirlooms you have to leave behind. Leave them behind. Get yourself to safety. I did. I left my home in South Florida after I'd had several visions of what was going to happen in the future. I definitely left South Florida to prepare an ark of safety for my children. And once again, I'm at the point of saying, God, what would you have me to do? Where do I go? What do I need to do next? Because the government ain't gonna tell you. Heck no, you need to be prepared, but you need to be prepared spiritually so you can hear God's voice. I know there's many of you don't wanna hear this and you probably already clicked off by now. So if you're still listening, means you might like to hear what I'm getting ready to say more. The Bible tells me, what do you gain? You gain the whole world, but you lose your life. You lose your family. Well, what, what have you gained? Nothing. What really counts in this life not how many guns you got, not how much ammunition you got. What really counts is do you know the Father? Do you have a personal relationship with the Father? Well, I didn't. Not until my North Carolina cousin called me up and began to set me straight in the very nicest of way, let me know I was on my way to hell. And if I didn't change some things, I wasn't going to live to see my heavenly home. 
I repented of my sins. Made a 300. Made a, I made an about face. Just turn it around. Get rid of all the bad stuff. And God began to bless me. You want to be blessed? And call out to God. Repent of any sin. I repent daily. Just in case. I don't want to offend people. I don't want to hurt people. I'm tired of being politically correct, Brian. You know who you are. <clears throat> you see, we got bad times coming in this country. And it's not going to be as simple as back in the 1900s, 1918. Staying on your farm and minding your own business. Because we got people that's determined to kill, steal, and to destroy our nation, your livelihood, your life, your home. So, John 3, 16, the most simple verse in the world, Bible tells me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him would not perish but would have everlasting life if you want that everlasting life and if you want God directing your steps telling you where you need to move to stay out of danger to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ believe that he sent his son to save you and then you start reading your Bible every day that's right. Talk to God. Talk to him just like I'm sitting here talking to you. There's no need to be scared of what's coming down the road. People that say they're scared don't know God. I got scared for a while. <laughs> scared myself some of the videos I was putting out. But what we need is more of God. And less of trash TV. He's the one. That's where your wisdom comes from. Don't let your guard down, people. We are in a war. Sure. I'd love to have all my grandbabies sitting here next to me. Helping me. Prepare these beans, but they're not. 